the odds of a, of a major earthquake magnitude, eight or so, uh, on the southern end are, I think, roughly one in three in the next 50 years, and the odds of a, of a very big earthquake hitting in the kind of more populated northern half of this are, I thought it was one in 10, but are you telling me it's more like one in five now? Well, um, we've added, this is, this is unpublished, but that, so the, the published number that's, <laughs> just to be straight on this, peer reviewed published number is 10 to 14%. Uh, we have four, we just, we're just in the process of adding four new events that bump that up to uh, around 17%. I'm wondering if we can just go down the line. Can each of you kind of tell me, like, what's the nightmare scenario? What are you most worried about as the kind of overwhelming secondary effect from this event? It's to me, one of the longest lasting secondary things is really the environmental disaster that's, that's uh, inevitably going to come with this. In, in Japan, we had Fukushima, and that, and that happened because they underestimated the size of the earthquake. Uh, we're in probably better shape, or we, we know it's going to be really big, and we, don't, we probably haven't missed that. Uh, and so when we have these uh, nearshore landsliding and things like that, especially in places like the Columbia River, we have a lot of fuel storage tanks. In fact, all of our liquid fuels are basically on liquefiable soils, just sitting there under their own weight. And so I, I can see that we're going to have, you know, in addition to all of the other <coughs> fire, flood, and pestilence that you have in a giant earthquake and tsunami, we're going to have millions of gallons of gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel in the Columbia River, uh, just like that. And uh, we don't have active nuclear power plants right now, but we do have also two uh, decommissioned nuclear power plants that have spent fuel rod storage, which was actually one of the, the other problems that Fukushima had. And, and they're somewhat protected. The one in, there's one in Humboldt County, and there's one in, uh, near Portland yeah. as well. So we have um, hardly anybody has really talked about uh, the, the environmental side of this whole thing. We're all concerned about ourselves as humans. What are we gonna, where are we going to get water? Where are we going to get food? Uh, things like that. But um, we're going to have just a massive, massive environmental yeah. uh, disaster along with us. Mm -hmm. You realize that there's these incredibly complex layers of problems when an earthquake hits. Uh, you get, uh, you get gas main breaks, things like this, so you get fires, but of course you've also lost your water pressure, and so then you can't fight the fires. And there, there, there comes a, a real question of priorities. What do you fix first? And this, I guess, is something I'd love to hear you field. How do you go about establishing those kinds of priorities? What's, what's top on your list right now? Top of my list, um, I think there's really two basic things to get any city ready. Build things the right way and build things in the right place. And a lot of our infrastructure is in probably the worst place we could have built. Um, so what do we fix first? Uh, certainly the water. There, there's no question. You can't survive without water. Um, our Portland Water Bureau, I think, has done more than any other agency to get the city ready. Uh, through Portland runs the Willamette River. And all of our water comes from this beautiful watershed in uh, an area called Clackamas County. Pipes have to bring the water in from the east side to the west side. It has to cross the Willamette River. They're now putting in another uh, Willamette River crossing. They're hardening all of our reservoirs. Um, so life safety is always first. Um, we're trying to retrofit as many buildings as possible. Uh, but certainly the water system, ensuring the water system. And then um, I would say that uh, getting uh, everyone ready for the earthquake.